So hi everybody. Uh, <laughs> so I, uh, I'm, uh, my name is uh, Remy Bovio. I work at the GB France, and I will present you today OpenOps, that is the uh, second, uh, well, the first uh, platform for French biodiversity data, uh, but the second one that is using um, the Atlas of Living Australia modules uh, after Spain. Uh, so I will I will present you the main uh, the main uh, uh, the main, uh, sorry, I'm losing my words. Uh, yes, the main components, uh, the main news, and uh, what are the future perspectives uh, we would like to introduce to, to the platform. Uh, so open up, as I already said, is a data sharing tools for species observation. Uh, data uh, from the INPN, that is the National Inventory of Natural Heritage. So OpenOps enables the consultation and downloading of all the INPN data according to the sharing uh, principle established by uh, the SINP, that is the Information System for Inventory of uh, Natural uh, Heritage. So the geograph geographical perimeter is all France uh, for land and maritime domain, and the taxonomic perimeters is uh, taxa that are present in the TaxRef uh, repository. So the main functionality of OpenOps, uh, so we can um, make simple and advanced uh, data search based on different criteria, uh, taxonomic, geographical, temporal, status of the, of the species. Uh, we can also filter and sort uh, the data based on a wide range of uh, criteria. Uh, we can um, make a, a unitary uh, data visualiz visualization and access to all the information tr uh, pr transmitted by the producer. And we can have a map and a tabular uh, visualization of uh, search results and all the um, data, so data, uh, the, the figures or the, um, or the maps can be downloaded in different formats. So just a few words about the data that are uh, available uh, on OpenOps. Uh, so sensitive data uh, are uh, have our um, blurred so that uh, if the endangered species, for example, uh, have um, uh, an uh, occurrence, um, it can it won't be it won't be available at a very thin um, uh, geographical point. So the data uh, first in the INPN are uh, controlled. So there is standardization for data and metadata. They, are, they, they have a coherence, coherence uh, controls and also an automatic validation uh, that uh, gives the levels of validity for the observation, which can be certain, likely, doubtful, and et cetera. Et cetera. And all the, all the, um, all the data, uh, all, the, all the occurrence data are stored in the solar cluster and uh, we have data sets available in the collectory database. So technically, as I already said, uh, the, um, the OpenOps uh, is techni technically built uh, upon the Atlas of, of Living Australia project. So here are all the modules we use. So all the gray uh, boxes uh, are not developed by the LA or by us. So I will. Uh, so so we have three web application, which are the biocache hubs, collectory, and BIE index. Uh, for the backend services, we have uh, five of them, which are the biocache service, the ALA name service, logger service, REST API that is developed uh, by us, not by the LA, and the Odata. And then we have here the, the data layer then that is not developed specifically. So just to have a little view of uh, the, um, how, how the different uh, components uh, talk to each other. So we have the biocache hubs, that is a central front end, front end that displays the data and it's connected to all the, well, to some of the services, so the REST API, BI index, biocache service and all data. And then they, uh, they, con they contact the services they need to contact. 
So we'll just uh, talk about uh, some of the components that are very important. So the Biocache Hub, as I already said, is a front end. It provides core functionality for the Atlas of Living Australia, and it comes as a Grail plugins. So the Biocache service that is uh, the heart of the of the application, according to me, uh, which enables the search occurrences, displays uh, the occurrence details goes to the collectory to enrich the occurrence details. Uh, we can execute download uh, as well. And we log all the search display and download statistics. And interestingly, we have two, uh, two instances of the Bucket service. Uh, so only uh, one, um, one uh, instance will make the search and display, and one instance will make the download, the download part and it enables avoid freezing search or display during if there is a, is a lot of downloads uh, going on. Uh, then the collectory, uh, that is the metadata registry, and uh, enables to get uh, more information about uh, the occurrence uh, we wanted to, to see. Uh, now the, um, the REST API that uh, basically uh, enables the home con page counter to get uh, all the figures you can see and auto-suggestion of uh, contents like providers, region, municipalities, and so on. Uh, and finally, the ODATA, uh, the ODATA modules, that is uh, simply a taxon and common name auto-suggest in the research area. So for the infrastructure, so we have uh, mainly one, uh, one uh, uh, virtual machines that has all the, all the services that come as uh, Docker containers. And we have one uh, Docker container, uh, Docker Compose file to, to link them uh, so they can communicate. <coughs> and, sorry. And we have volume for data persistency. And as I already told you, uh, we have uh, solar and cloud mode, uh, and we have six nodes. The collection that we display is a biocache, and we have six shards with one replica each, and three zookeepers as well. So what are the next evolution you would like to, to add to OpenOps? So first, uh, it would be uh, the reporting of a suspicious data that anybody could do without login. Uh, we would like to add um, a part of uh, expert validation, so according to your field or geographical uh, knowledge. So you could log in and you could, uh, you could say this data is okay or not and we could keep uh, track of all the, the history of the record. Uh, then we would like to develop some web services so that people can make uh, applications and automate some stuff. And we would like also to, to improve the data update frequency that uh, uh, today is twice a year, and we would like to make it, uh, in the best case, uh, continuous. And thanks for your attention. Thanks, Remy. All right, before we move, uh, let's check whether there are any questions here in the room. Okay. okay yes. Let's go. More of a comment than a question. Um, you mentioned that you would like expert validation to be one of your future steps, and I would just recommend looking at the eBird project, which you probably have already thought about. Uh, but they have a, a system where uh, people are submitting bird observations and they do have like a team of experts who actually like make sure that that is um, viable. So just good okay. option. Thank you. Okay. I, I have similar questions precisely about the automatic validation. That might seem spot on. <laughs> Thanks. All right, we have a question online, uh, Remy. So mm -hmm. it says, when you show components requiring Tomcat, Tomcat versions seven, eight and nine, are those minimum version requirements or do you have to run each exact Tomcat version for that component to work? Uh, for all the containers, we only have uh, Tomcat 8 working currently. All right, thanks. And just expanding on that, because I think I should have some background. I, I, I think it is all depends. We are in the ALA continuously upgrading the different images, basically our version, the base. Uh, we run all our platforms on Ubuntu platforms. so. Pretty much, we try to, to tie basically to the latest uh, long-term maintenance for Ubuntu. 
and using the, the default Tomcat installations provided. All right. Are there any other questions for Remy? Okay. okay. Thank you, Remy. Thanks, Remy. So 